So as you can tell from the intro, um, I'm going to be playing through Metal Gear 2, Snolid Snake. Um, the original reason I wanted to play through this is I made a promise a long time ago to uh, DZ that if he played through Snake's Revenge, I would play through the original Metal Gear 2 from uh, MSX. And uh, this is the PS2 version where they've changed uh, the dialogue and changed the portraits for the characters. Um, this is where they introduce Colonel Campbell, who follows into the Metal Gear Solid series and pretty much is the whole time. And you get a radar, which is weird, because when Snake gets the Soliton radar in Metal Gear Solid 1, he kind of acts like he's never had a radar before. So, what's the radar's effective range? Take a look at your radar display. It shows a nine-screen area centered on your position. Breaking the fourth wall kind of works. Yeah. It, I mean, it pretty much is the Soliton radar system because it doesn't work in enclosed spaces. If anybody sees you, it gets jammed. I also like the translation a little bit better than the uh, fan translation for the MSX version. It's a little more laid back. Snake talks like he would talk instead of being kind of wooden because you're tra translating straight from Japanese. So... For a while here I tried to um, do a no... Like a no spotted, no kill run, but um... Later on I realized that uh, that shit's pretty impossible. That's the Ration B1 unit. It has uh, chocolate in it, which will become important for a retarded reason later. But here's my obvious call to say, Snake, hit the action button to do shit. God, what are you, dumb? But the real reason I'm kind of playing this besides the promise to DZ is that a lot of people play Metal Gear Solid and then read the... Uh, backstory clips from the other games and they think oh man these other games must be really good Metal Gear 1 is not that bad for the uh, MSX version I prefer the NES version just because that's what I grew up with even though like Polly said many times uh, there's no Metal Gear in it but if you've actually played the original version the Metal Gear that's in that game just kind of stands there you throw you put plastic explosives on its feet in a certain order, but you only get the order if you if you rescue Dr. Petrovich and then his daughter, and then go back to Dr. Petrovich. This is where I don't know where he learned it, but Hideo Kojima learns that uh, backtracking is fun. And I also chose the PS2 version for another reason: is that the controls are a little bit easier to remap to a joystick. The MSX uh, emulator is a little funky like when you access your item screen it's F1 it's like a computer and I'm just eh, easier to just use a joystick don't go in the front door you can't sneak in the front door use the vents over and out now as I go along through this game you're gonna notice a lot of this stuff in this game gets recycled into Metal Gear Solid 1 like not being able to, is he gonna be like Big Boss? Nope And there's some jerk outside the outside the truck, so we'll have to wait a second before we got. People stay in their routes a long time in this game too. They'll like stand there for a while before they try to think. Just crawl into the truck. Get spotted. And then fucking run for it in the vent. If you hear if you hear an audio lag, it's because the uh, I'm actually playing it off the game disc and not using it like an ISO or anything. So sometimes between music um, <clears throat> music transitions in scenes, it will get there will be a two or three second delay in sound. Um, for the most part, though, the music in this game is pretty good. If you go down from here, there's a vent you can't get. You can't do anything but fall back down and have to go back over to the other vent and this vent takes you out to somewhere that you can't go anywhere you just have to go back in you'll find a lot of these and the transceiver trick from the first game does not work where you could um, pick up an item use the transceiver this is the handgun I don't have the suppressor yet so it's pretty much useless until I get it 
um, because the first time you fire a shot it'll alert everybody in the area but anyway in the first Metal Gear you could um, use the transceiver they called it a glitch um, just open the transceiver, close the transceiver and the same item would respawn But loading screen, remember those? I like Snake's attire. Very military-esque compared to what he usually wears. I'm Holly, Holly White. I infiltrated Zans of our land a month ago, blah, blah, blah. So I know pretty much how things work around here. I'll help you any way I can. Call me later. They also give you a very handy-dandy um, remember what the frequencies are screen. Because in the original MSX version, you had to write down and then tune back and forth. kind of pain in the ass. Of course, you can't go in that door. Tanks inside with no, a door not big enough to get out of. A lot of this game is a lot of trial and error to see where you need to go and stuff like that, but uh. Yeah, and once you climb under there, you can't climb left or right, so. Not really a. Yep. Spotted for the second time. At least in this one, not like the original Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid, uh, when you would get spotted then and crawl into a vent within vision of a person, they would just roll a grenade in there and kill you. One of my one of the funniest things I remember seeing was uh, the original Japanese demo. They would point to the vent and be like, "Snake, tink, tink, tink," and just blow you up. Those metal vents, when you walk over them, they'll make noise so people will see you. And uh, since we don't really have a weapon we want to use, we're just going to fucking hook, hook, hook it. Yeah. Let's keep going. If I was playing on European Extreme, I'd already be dead. Because the first time you get spotted in European Extreme in Metal Gear Solid 2 or 3, you're dead. And the uh, new Metal Gear HD collection comes out next Tuesday because today's the second, and uh, I'm kind of playing this just because, just because I want to, um, kind of gave up on Legacy of the Wizard, I actually spent two and a half hours trying to play through a, what's that noise, trying to play it through a sequence to get Zemmin's crown, and it's, like, even just practicing, it's fucking impossible, and if I was to do a live run of it, there'd be no way, bathroom, floor on the floor, floor, there's also a sauna, mess hall, locker room, and barracks, see ya, Loser. So Colonel Hamble says, "Fight when you have to fight, kill when you have to kill." Those are the rules on the battlefield and in a shooting game. Over and out. Yeah, that's helpful. Got card one and some binoculars. Uh, 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 your mama. The only way I can think of to uh, progress through this whole area is to just crawl, and uh, that would just add another, you know, 25 minutes to your time. Yeah, yeah. Nothing there. Don't get killed, Snake. Run, Snake. That's funny. When they're in evasion mode, they won't listen to the the fence you're walking on. Uh, shit. Ammo that I can't pick up, probably. Do <laughs> you think they'd give up after a while? Like, fucking, he just keeps running in circles. Alright. Back to the elevator. Wait, now, now get in the elevator? Alright. Very, very high-tech animation in the elevator. The uh, only other elevator I've seen that's animated that well is uh, Mass Effect. Here in the computer lab now, that elevator on the left is unusable because it's not able to stop at the third floor.
And if you remember, um, well, I didn't call him, but uh, Colonel Campbell will tell you that uh, when you need to find Dr. Keo Marv, he's a red dot on your radar, which sounds familiar, huh? Yeah, I don't have the uh, the, the goggles yet, so, and I didn't realize at the time that you could use the cigarettes gas mask. I don't know why I just flee the room without getting the gas mask. Oh, okay. The gas only turns on when you hit the lasers. Ah, I'm learning stuff. Watching myself not be very good at this. Yeah, fuck that. Just run. Just run. Put the gas mask on. There you go. And just like the uh, original Metal Gear Solid, it just cuts down the original the amount of O2 that you waste. All right. But if you look on the screen on the right, one room over from us, that's where Dr. Uh, Marv is. So we need to get there. him to death because there's a switch right there on the side that can turn gas on and at this point in the game you can only carry one ration gas mask on We're saving our data which I learned after the fact does not actually save your data it um it saves you at the nearest checkpoint so if you beat a boss, it might not necessarily be the next checkpoint. And when you go to load your save game, you're 10 minutes behind where you were at. So. Yeah, this is Dr. Keomarv. Making sure we're not missing anything. And here we go. <laughs> Foolish foxhounder. I'm gonna call him foxhound this time. Dr. Marv isn't here. Figure foxhound was used as a cheap transmitter. You guys are really stupid. And our first boss battle Black Ninja, former NASA extraterrestrial. Uh, special Forces, you know, let's just see how many, how many different special forces are there, though. Show me what you got, foxhound. So to beat this guy, you run around the room as long as he stays in the middle and you just shoot him so basically this is Ocelot from Metal Gear Solid 1 without reloading and <laughs> hilariously I could not figure out which weapon which button was to shoot the equipped weapon I'm trying to punch him, okay there we go There you go. And it'll make that noise when you're actually damaging him. Okay. Yeah, once you lock him into a, a pattern, just like original Ocelot, you can just wail on him. He's not as easy as Twin Snakes Ocelot, but uh, he's still pretty easy. Okay. And you can't shoot him twice, it won't do anything. See, now these flashing red, he's almost dead. Might as well just use that ration. Oh, now he's dead. Black Ninja, Snake! Who are you? How do you know my name? It's me, Schneider, Kyle Schneider, remember me? Yeah, I remember that you didn't call me in Metal Gear 1 until you were dead. When they took you away and they quotation marks killed you. He was the guy from the first game that you could call when you were in situations where you needed to find something before Jennifer. Like, uh, the gas mask and other stuff. What are you saying? Basically, what happened between Metal Gear 1 and 2, after you blew up Outer Heaven, they, uh... The NATO came in and did an airstrike against Outer Heaven and... 
basically, you know, Big Boss is, is the bad guy, and in quotation marks. I mean, after you play all the Metal Gear games, you're kind of like, you know, Snake's kind of a dick. Like, Big Boss was supposed to be the good guy, even though he was keeping the, the world in a perpetual state of war, and Big Boss, I mean, uh, Snake was kind of just a fucking pawn. No. You're no different, they'll forget you too. They did. But he wasn't like them. Who? He came and saved us from annihilation. Like, the Black Ninja doesn't tell you who Big Boss, like, it's Big Boss, but, uh, like, five minutes later, they'll tell him. They'll be like, yeah, it was Big Boss, man. You'll know what a wonderful man he is. What a great turkey dinner he makes. No hate between us, I'll tell you Dr. Marv is. Find the man who's guarding the cell where Dr. Marv is being held. Da da da, follow you, lead you straight into the cell. Now, I would say this, that this next part, which will be in the next episode, because we're almost at 19 minutes, is one of the more annoying ones. And he just blows up. But uh, a lot of sequences in this game are annoying as shit. So um, that does it for episode one of Metal Gear 2. Uh, join us next time when uh, we get to learn how to chase people. Later.